Today I'm going to read another segment on philosophy, ethics, and thinking. The reason being, I want you to understand about ethics. It is interesting, but there's a whole lot more to it than just thinking. Hi, I'm Dr. Simpson, and welcome to Learn with GS. This channel is geared towards educating persons who are interested in introductory college courses and advanced placement high school courses through reading textbooks. So, classes have started. Let's continue reading on ethics. Philosophy is hard. Just, let's just be real. Part of the reason it can feel so annoying is because it seems like it should not be hard. After all, Philosophy just involves thinking, and we all think. Thinking is easy. We do it without, well, as you can guess, without thinking. And yet philosophy involves not just thinking, but thinking well. Of course, it is true that we all think. But thinking, like football, maths, baking, and singing, is something we can get better at. Unfortunately, people rarely ask how. If you do not believe us, then just open your eyes. Society might be a whole lot better off if we thought well more often. Admittedly, doing this particular course, philosophy, A-level philosophy, will not give you the ability to solve the problems of the world. We are not that naive. But if you engage with philosophy, then you will be developing yourself as a thinker who thinks well. And this is why A-level philosophy is useful not merely to would-be philosophers, but also to any would-be thinkers, perhaps heading off to make decisions in law, medicine, structural engineering, just about anything that requires you to think effectively and clearly. However, if philosophy is hard, then ethics is really hard. This might seem unlikely at first glance. I mean, after all, ethics deals with issues of right and wrong. And we have been discussing what is right and what is wrong since we were children. Philosophy of mind, on the other hand, deals with topics like the nature of consciousness, while metaphysics deals with the nature of existence itself. Indeed, compared to understanding a lecture in philosophy of physics, Arguing about the ethics of killing in video games might seem something of a walk in the park. This is misleading, not because other areas of philosophy are easy, but because the complexity of ethics is well camouflaged. Respecting ethics. When you study A-level ethics and you evaluate what is right and wrong, it can be tempting and comforting to spend time simply defending your initial views. Few people would come to a debate about vegetarianism or abortion without some pre-existing belief. If you are open-minded in your ethical approach, then you need not reject everything you currently believe, but you should see these beliefs as starting points or base camps from which your inquiry commences. For example, why do you think that eating animals is okay or that abortion is wrong? If you think that giving to charity is good, what does good mean? For true success, ethics requires intellectual respect. If you might think that a particular position is obviously false, perhaps take this reaction as a red flag, as it may suggest that you have missed some important step of an argument. Ask yourself why someone, presumably just as intellectually proficient as yourself, might have once accepted that position. If you're thinking well as an ethicist, then you are likely to have good reasons for your views and be prepared to rethink those views where you cannot find such good reasons. In virtue of this, you are providing justification for the beliefs you have. It is the philosopher's job, whatever beliefs you have, to ask why you hold those beliefs. What reasons might you have for those beliefs? For example, imagine the reason that you believe it is okay to eat meat is that it tastes nice. As philosophers, we can say that this is not a particularly good reason. Presumably, it might taste nice to eat your pet cat or your neighbor or something else. But in these cases, the taste justification seems totally unimportant. The details of this debate are not relevant here. For more on this later, we're going to read it in chapter 14. 
The point is that there are good and bad reasons for our beliefs, and it is the philosopher's job to reveal and analyze them. You, the A-level student, philosophy is more than just fact learning or a history of ideas. It is different from chemistry, mathematics, languages, theology, the other disciplines. It is unique. Sure, it is important to learn some facts and to learn what others believed. But a successful student needs to do more than simply regurgitate information in order to both maneuver past the exam hurdles and to become a better ethicist. One aim of this book is to aid you in engaging with a living discipline. Philosophy, and in particular ethics, is a live and evolving subject. When you study philosophy, you are entering a dialogue with those who have gone before. Learning about what various philosophers think will enable you to become clearer about what you think and add to that evolving dialogue. You will notice that in this book, we have not included hints and tips boxes or statements of biography concerning the scholars. I mean, although these things have their place, we did not want you, the reader, to think that they have learned philosophy if they know what is in the boxes. In reality, university philosophy departments often work with first-year students to lose some of their less academically successful habits. Why? Well, one of the authors has taught ethics at university for many years. Philosophy students often say something like this. I thought we'd do hard stuff at university. I did utilitarianism at A-level. Can I have something different to study, please? And this statement reveals a whole host of things. Most important is the view that to do ethics is to remember information. That is why a student can say they have done utilitarianism. They have learned some key facts and arguments, but philosophy is not like this. In order to understand philosophy, you need to be authentic with yourself and to ask what you think, using this as a guide to critically analyze the ideas learned and lead yourself to your own justifiable conclusion. Philosophy is a living and dynamic subject that we cannot reduce to a few key facts or a simplistic noting of what other people have said. Some people distinguish between ethics and morality. We do not. For us, nothing hangs on the difference between them. And so in this book, you will see us switching between the terms. So do not get hung up on this distinction. In our next section, we will go to doing ethics well, legality versus morality. 